Stop by to interact with the community and I every Friday night at 8 o'clock for live stream Fridays. Welcome trolls. <laughs>
It's an amazing view and finding. And wait till you see how clear I got it. It's probably the clearest I've ever gotten it. And uh, it, yeah, this is it. It's a beautiful show of the entire features of all the surface and what looks like, you know, you got to say these areas look curious. You really must agree with me. And let me tell you, if they were natural, they would have been mentioned. That's the thing, you know, and why are they not showing the surface this way? This is an inversion. Here's a quick example of another UFO or cloud-like object going by on the screen. Now, let me tell you that this object, um, I had to slow it down, zoom in, and uh, descend the exposure. They have the same color as the surface, the same reflectivity. So you're not distinguishing the difference from this object with the underground, uh, sorry, the under... Uh, laying surface that's just underneath it. Now here's where it gets really interesting and I'm going to really take the time to explain it. I've showed this before, uh, not as clear as this, but I've showed it before further away and like for 11 to 20 seconds. I'm going to really take the time to explain to you guys. This is pressed up. This is probably about 50 to 75 kilometers east of Bianchini craters just beside it. Look at these objects. They have different colors. It's all one color, this type of structuring that's all laid out over the surface that people are not distinguishing the difference. Inverted here, I can't really distinguish the difference whether these structures are glass or whether they have uh, an insulated um, layer over top of them or if it's the structures or constructed objects themselves that are actually green, but they are green and it's of a turquoise or green hue. You can see them here, and they're all laid out all around Bianchini Crater, and not just around Bianchini Crater. We're gonna go see other areas too. This is really the topography of the surface of the moon. So if you wanna know what the natural and artificial features look like, uh, the different levels, you could really see them here. And this is what I'm trying to bring out for you guys, is that, you know, we all see that flat, gray, one surface level, um, area of the moon no matter where you look is always an area it's flat and it's gray but it's not and look here at the back look at the beautiful structuring look at them how they're all like like beehives and they're like ants all over the surface all these objects that have never ever been talked about before anywhere and I'm trying to bring this out to the world so people can see it because this is just a straight-up inversion this is very very real and hang on, we're going to get in with, you know, take this uh, inversion off because you guys want to see it totally natural. And here we are. So we're looking at, again, anywhere from 35 to 75, maybe 70 kilometers east of Bianchini Crater. This little um, secret is the construction. All this gray that you're seeing there, lighter areas, the smaller construction, are on top of what people think are the structures. <laughs> no, the, what people think are structures are actually what the st real structures are on top of. So the white area that you're seeing, all the white, uh, well, they have this gray type of structure right here. That you're seeing it gray looking, and it's not gray again. When you zoom in, it has a green color. And any time you invert it or put it through inversion, it always is different than the color um, of the surface. So, but these have the same reflectivity. So everyone's seen the same um, color on the surface. It's like, it's just gray. This is Aristarchus Crater, the Aristarchus Plateau. And we're looking just underneath of Aristarchus Crater. We're looking again at the topography of the moon, an arrangement of the natural and artificial formations and features of the surface of any given area on the moon. And this is it. This is really what you get if you want to land there. This is what it looks like. It's only a basic idea, some will say. Well, it's a very good and um, confirmed basic idea because the features are really there. There's no trickery, there's no man manipulation here. We just saw lines at the bottom of the plateau underneath uh, Plato Crater, uh, sorry, wow, uh, underneath the plateau uh, under Aristarchus Crater, because they do call this the plateau underneath. And it's south of Aristarchus. Look at the long lines and columns um, with all these overlaid objects connected to them. It has to be something constructed. It was never mentioned before. It's, it's beautiful to be able to see it. So if you wanted to see the natural surface exactly with no manipulation, what it looks like, well, this is it. It's just that 
What's maddening is that everything has the same color, right? And that's what I'm trying to say, that everything has the same reflectivity. But all these objects that you're seeing, natural or not, have different colors all throughout the entire moon. It's so colorful. So that trouble that we have seeing the surface and that illumination that's blinding us, well, the colors is also part of the problem. This is live under Aristarchus Crater, the plateau. Look at the structuring, the way the topography of the surface is made. Beautiful topography. And when we look here under Aristarchus Crater, you all know it's just a flat gray surface, but it's not. And we're seeing some of the elevation and descending levels. Do you know that NASA, there's Aristarchus on top. Do you know that NASA only recently, I don't even know if it's been 365 days that they've told us that the moon has different levels, descending levels, um, you know, as low as 10,000 feet on the moon. And I've been trying to say that for two and a half years because you could clearly see it, even here, looking in the dark areas, once clarified how low they go. This is Copernicus Crater. Look here, and trust me, it's a very nice view because again, it's hard to see the surface around Copernicus Crater, but we're seeing the natural or artificial features around them on the surface, and that's exactly what the surface looks like. So again, I showed sinus iridum, and that's what we'll look at again uh, another time, and I'll show you that you really, it, they say they couldn't land there, China, because of the uneven surface. Well, you, you better believe it. There are so many different levels um, all over the moon that people are not noticing. Everyone pass, uh, you know, sees with their telescopes, uh, even with their telescopes, yes, a flat gray area, and it's not flat. Just take down the exposure, adjust the exposure. There's no manipulation uh, that has to be done. It's very simple, and no matter what the size of the telescope, you're able to see this. You're able to do this yourself. This is Eratosthenes Crater, so we're looking at the area around Eratosthenes Crater, and again, just showing you guys the surface, the virtual surface, the real surface of exactly what is down there on um, on the ground, at ground level. Um, you know, it's cool because not many telescopes are showing it. Um, each person, his own field of research, I get it. But for me, I'm working on this, trying to show exactly what it looks like. I just want to thank all of you for following the research and for taking the time to subscribe to this channel. Suzanne Paul, thank you so much from Germany for contributing to this channel. Thanks for the generous contributions and for being a part of this community. Thanks a lot, Suzanne.